How's it going? It's me, Goodwill Hunter, and I am back with something different, something I've been wanting to do. It's because it's something I do a lot of uh, when I'm out thrifting and I find PlayStation 2s or Xboxes, even Wii's. You can modify these things. There is soft mods out there that uh, you can install and you can then load custom firmware, emulators, you name it, different kinds of apps. It's pretty cool. So I thought we would mod a PS2, a fat PS2. You could do these on slim PS2s as well, but um, just for the sake, I have like four or five of them and I really need to do them to get them on Craigslist to sell them. I figure we'd go ahead and mod. So things you're gonna need for this modification on a fat PS2 is obviously a fat PS2. So we got one here. You're going to need a network adapter. Now it's not necessary for the start of this, but for the end of this, we're gonna actually install a, uh, a hard drive into the Fat PS2, and we're gonna go ahead and back up some of my legitimately owned PlayStation 2 games, uh, which you can do. So you need a uh, PS2 network adapter. It's the one that's got the broadband and the telephone connection. And uh, you'll obviously need an IDE hard drive. This is a Seagate 160 gig hard drive IDE. Um, you could find these in DirecTV receiver. Not, oh, I'm sorry. Anything that was like DVR. So DirecTV has some, um, some other cable companies. TiVo, you can find some in TiVo. They probably won't be as big as 160 gigs. Uh, but you can still find some. They're still out there. If you're at a thrift store and you see a DVR and it's like five bucks, buy it because chances are it's going to have at least a bigger hard drive than, you know, you can use. Obviously because the PS2 didn't have fucking hard drive, so anything's better than nothing, folks. You're also going to need a memory card, and it has to be a PlayStation brand. It cannot be an off brand. It has to be a PlayStation 2 uh or just a Sony PlayStation 2 uh, memory card, the 8 megabyte one. I think it can be higher, but at least it has to be a Sony one. Um, you're going to need a USB stick. Anything will do, but it has to be, be able to be formatted in FAT32. As you can see, I've already labeled mine, PS2 Magic. And for this, we're going to use the memory card adapter. As you can see, this is for the... Uh, when PlayStation 3 came out, if you wanted to move your save files um, from your PlayStation 2 to your PS3, you needed this. So you would, you know, plug it in, and it has a USB adapter, obviously a cable that goes to it. Plug it in, like so, and then you would plug that into your PlayStation 3. You're also going to need software. We'll get into that when we get to that, but... To install this, you need a specific driver, which someone has done a very nice how-to and pretty much has wrote a lot of these in self-installer. So we'll get to that when we get to that, but you're also going to need, obviously, some sort of a laptop or a PC running. Uh, I would say I've done it with Windows 7. Um, when it gets to the part with... Uh, when it gets to this part, because you're going to need to format this a specific way for the PlayStation 2 to re be able to read it and save games to it, I've only had success using Windows XP, and the fact that it has IDE means one of two things. One of two. Now, you're either going to need a PC that you can plug that hard drive into, so it's going to obviously need to be an older PC that has... IDE ribbon cables and an interface, or you can use something like this. I have not had any success only because um, I think it has something to do with the way it interfaces with the computer, and I think it does not want to work. For some reason, I couldn't get it to work in, in, in XP unless I physically had the drive installed, but it's just a uh, cradle that turns an IDE hard drive into pretty much a USB mass storage device um, but you can at least use it to power so if you have something that only has maybe an extra ribbon but doesn't have power you can use one of these to power the drive at least because you're going to need to then run specific software to then format and rebuild 
the hard drive structure for the PS2 uh, hard drive to be able to be read after we load all the custom firmware, and that's ultimately the end game, folks. We want to be able to load games that we have legitimately onto that hard drive and then be able to play them on our fat modded PS2. So let's let's get to the story of how we go about doing this, which if you give me one second, we'll transition right over there. Okay guys, uh, so yeah, let's get about making a bootable PS2 memory card that has some custom firmware on it so you can load apps and you can install um, emulators and any other kind of applications that uh, they have there that are uh, homebrew. So first off, you see we got the PS2 uh, mod folder that I just have on the desktop. It's got um, pretty much you're going to need to install the PS3 MCA tool. This was made by a gentleman, I believe, on this uh, PS, PSX scene forum. Let's see, his name is... Come on, dude, I want to give you credit... Lagiosman, Lagiosman, whatever. Um, so he made a nice little uh, tutorial and package for installing the uh, memory card adapter that was used on your PS3 if you wanted to transfer save files from the PS2 to the PS3. Uh, but now you can actually use that to make a uh, bootable uh, custom firmware uh, PS2 memory card. So it's pretty cool. You can load a lot of apps, you can back up games, you can run emulators. So it's pretty cool and it's pretty easy. So I thought I would just make a video really quick uh, just to show. So anyways, yes, you can go to this website. I'll have it in the description below. Uh, but you can download the attached file and pretty much all you need to do is just follow the steps. It's very easy. Uh, so you download the file and uh, we'll pull it up. Newbie package. So we'll just go ahead. No, oh, sorry. The one right below it. All right, we'll extract, extract files, hit OK. This is using 7-zip. You just want to extract it. Uh, go in here, go in again. All right, now, extract to the C drive, connect your memory card. So this is the part where we're actually going to install the driver for the memory card. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to plug her in. If I have an available USB port, uh, I think I do. Now I do. Let's go ahead and plug it in. As you can see, it's installing device driver. Uh, it's not going to be able to because I don't think I've installed this on this laptop. So, bam, could not. All right, well, that's fine because we already have the driver. That's fine. We'll have to go into device manager. So right click on computer, go to properties. This is a Windows 7 PC2 device manager. Bam, unknown device. So we'll update the driver, right click, update driver, browse, browse. Now we have to point it directly to the folder. So it's on the desktop, or obviously there. Uh, what was it called? PS2 mod. PS2 mod. It's bam in there. Uh, we'll just point it right to it, hit OK, and include subfolders. And yes, we will go ahead and install, anyways. So this is going to install the driver for the uh, PS3 or no, the memory card adapter for the PS3. Once that's done, bam, now we have it. So now we can move on. So hit close. All right, it registers. It's installed fine. Close out of that, close out of that. That looks tasty. Mmm, making me hungry. Anyway, so install the adapter drivers. We already did that. Open the command prompt. All right, so to make things a lot easier, we're just going to go ahead, open up this folder. It's a blank containing another folder. We're just going to grab that folder drag it to the desktop, rename it, because it doesn't need to be a long ass name. We'll just name it PS Mod. Bam. Alright, now we're gonna go open up the command prompt because now we're on number five. So open up that command prompt, start, just type in CMD if you're wondering Windows 7. If not, just find it. It should be under uh, start uh, all programs, accessories, system tools, commands, or just cmd.exe. So anyways, we need to open a folder. We need to get into that folder on the desktop. So let's go CD desktop. We're on the desktop. We need to go into that folder PS 
free mod. Is that what it was called? No. PS mod. So CD PS mod. All right, now we're in PS mod. So now we can run the command right here. We have to. No, I'm sorry. This is what we need to run. We're on step seven. We need to actually format the actual memory card. So MC dash format dot bat. And it should be formatting the memory card, which it is doing. And it will take a little bit of time, so we'll probably just jump to the next step. All right, so we are back, and it looks like it's done. Press any to continue. So now that it's formatted, we actually need to move on to, as you can see, step eight is full install dot bat. So now that we're at the command prompt, full dash install dot bat, and should be creating all the necessary directories and file structure for the memory card to be able to actually boot uh, to the custom firmware. And we're back. So as you can see, installation was complete on the memory card. So we've pretty much gotten all of the boot folders. You can see the ELFs, which are what actually boots. And now we just really need to copy the uh, other folder over. So just press Enter. And you can just pretty much close that. We don't need the command prompt. So we're on actually step 9, copy the extra uh, folder. Uh, this, honestly, I don't do. Um, so if we go, at this point, you can disconnect your, well, on my laptop, I have limited USB ports, so mm -hmm. I need to actually unhook the memory card. And using your FAT32 formatted memory card, insert it, because this is where you're going to take that folder. Uh, mine's in PS2 mem, this makes it easier. Uh, you'll see that... It says to go into the extra. See the extra folder? So we'll go back to the internet, the interwebs. It says to copy the extra folder, and pretty much you're going to copy that to the root of the memory card. Yeah, there's a bunch of apps and stuff in there and some good stuff. There's actually a what I found to be a better program. It's, it's called the Newbie Package, and what you can get it from this website sksapps.com so if we go over there start a new page so from here you can actually get um, some PS2 apps uh, I believe it's PS2 apps uh, da, 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 launchers and it should be Something in here called newbie. Newbie, newbie, newbie. Is it? No, it's not. Maybe it's an exploit. Exploit! Here we go. Free McBoot. So the newbie package. You want to download that. So go to there. Hit uh, PS2 apps, exploits, the free McBoot newbie package. Download that instead. Um, what you'll end up getting is this. We'll just go ahead and extract. Actually, sorry. I, I, I like using 7-zip for some freaking reason. So extract files. Blah, blah, blah. It should boot to a folder. Open that up. Open that up. So, and then pretty much all you're really going to want, you're going to drop this on that memory card you just made. So what you're going to need to do is uh, actually, let's look at the instructions. Uh, copy install folder to the USB device. All right, really easy. So copy this to your memory card. Mine happens to be, I think this is already installed there. Yeah, so mine's already installed. Um, it's just handy. It was a lot easier because what it does is it's going to actually install apps um, like the... Uh, there's one app, I think it's called PS2 to... HDD. Whoops. Where is it? I uh, probably can't see it. It's probably some weird format. But um, we'll go ahead and we'll do it again. Okay, so what I forgot to mention was in the newbie package, there's actually two files you need to pick. 
You need to copy the install folder, but you also need to copy the free mcboot.elf. You need to copy that to the root of the USB stick. Um, I have the USB stick right now plugged into the PlayStation 2, so I'm going to leave it there, but you need to copy both that file and the install folder to the root of that USB stick. From there, that will be able to format the memory card again, but with all the added apps that you're really going to want to need. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on our PS2 with the memory card, the USB stick plugged in, and uh, we'll go ahead and format that memory card again. I know it's kind of a redundant process, but uh, you need to have the memory card formatted to be able to boot to the USB stick to get the file to then reformat the memory card. I know. But anyways, let's, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger, and you'll be able to see... It's got the free McBoot, so we already have a formatted memory card that we could we could technically use, but it just it makes it kind of a little bit more easier, and it's a little bit more streamlined, and comes out a little bit more cleaner than if you had to then copy everything left and right like it wants you to do um, from the first website that we were at. So we'll just go down. Browser is your save files. System configuration, you can change clock settings, time, date, all that. You launch is what we're going to want to do. Uh, launch disk will obviously launch a disk that's um, sitting in the tray. Reload configuration, never have used it. Free McBoot configurator. This is where you can actually convert. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not convert. You can configure some of the settings for Free McBoot, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go to uLaunch because we want to go to that USB stick and we want to actually initiate the install process to reformat the memory card. So file browser. All right, now we have file structure. We want to go down to mass because this is the actual USB mass storage device, which is the actual USB stick. Hit circle, and then you'll see free mcboot.elf. That's what we want to run. That's going to go ahead and configure all of the new settings on the memory card. So go ahead and launch that with circle. And uh, you'll see now you get... You get format, launch, multi-version install, normal install, uninstall. Um, I'm sure. I think the multi-version. I think it's for like if you have different regions, like PAL, um, obviously NTSC or NTSCJ, which is the Japanese. Uh, normal install is fine for me. So, go ahead and install. I guess X now is valid. So it's going to go ahead and it finds it and uh, yeah. Hit continue. Uh, yep, we want to go ahead and overwrite it. And this takes a lot quicker than everything else. So the longest part was actually making the memory card. Now we're just going ahead and writing over it. And it writes pretty quick. I, I just I really enjoy people that go out and make this type of configurator and installer. It just makes everything because there's so many different ways that you could go about this, and there were so many different versions in the in the beginning. And it's kind of nice that it's gotten to the point where it's just as simple as this. This is just literally two buttons. So we've already installed it successfully. Cool. So then. I think that's about it. We can go ahead and shut it down. Let's go ahead and shut down. I'm just going to hold the reset button. We'll just power it back on. And you'll see that we have some different options. Alright, there we go. Free McBoot. What you took in a boot? All right, now we have browser, system fig, you launch, ESR. I'm not sure what that is. HD loader, that's what we're really looking for. Uh, simple media systems, kind of like Xbox Media Center. Um, you can load a different, like, you know, AVIs and all kinds of music files. So pretty much we were just kind of getting these three, ESR, HD loader. Um, and we'll go in more depth with HD loader because now that we have it installed, we can move on to actually installing a hard drive and possibly setting up... Uh, backing up some of your legally owned games. So stay tuned for that.